All right, here we go with another episode of Dirt to Dust. I'm your host, Doug Langford, along with Caleb Forbes. You should know us by now, but if it's your first time joining us, thank you, and make sure you go back and watch all of the other episodes. Um, So welcome back to those of you who listened to last week's episode, the last main episode on Wednesday. We did some, um, I guess we could kind of call it tips for... Um, new off-roaders, we talked a little bit about some, a little bit of driving technique. Mm-hmm. We talked a little bit about, um, and you know, where to order your parts from and, you know, getting with an off-road shop and all that, which is all, which is all good stuff, but we kind of, we kind of ran out of time. So we said, let's do this, um, as a two-part series. So we are here again for the second part of, uh, how to be a noob. And we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna talk a little bit more about that today, uh, as well as touch on a few other things. So let's jump right in and get after it. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. All right, so... Again, welcome back. Thank you guys for listening. And this is going to be our second part of a two-part series on how to be a noob uh, version 1.0. Uh, and I don't say that as a derogatory comment, Caleb. I mean, we were all noobs. No. We were no, all no, noobs no. at one point. I mean, yeah, we all had at to some start point, somewhere. we all had to put it uh, in, in four-wheel drive for the first time. Um, I am way too old mm-hmm. to remember when that was. Um, so we're not going to discuss uh, the late 80s or early 90s when that happened. Um, but we are going to talk about um, some beginner things. So I think the, the couple of things we didn't get to last week is um, kind of, I think everybody struggles with where to start. Um, I get yeah. that a ton. And I normally get it after wheeling events. Um, I used to, mm-hmm. and we're starting this again uh, with Trail Days too is do a lot of uh, beginner rides. And we near Greensboro have Uwari National Forest, which has, I mean, it's a small trail system, but it's a trail system. And it is pretty dang awesome for beginners. And so we used to use, we used to do a lot of beginner rides there. And they still do some, just not as many. Um, probably need to get back to that as well. But like I said, we're doing that at trail days with beginner groups. And we would get people out there that had, you know, I'd ask for a show of hands at a driver's meeting and say, oh, okay, who's never, who's never been here before? And you'd get several hands up and then you'd get, Someone says, well, who's, who's, uh, you know, who hasn't done, you know, whatever, who hasn't, you know, who's not on forties or whatever. And of course everybody's hand would go up. Right. So when you get the beginners out there, you know, you end up spotting them through more stuff than, than an advanced would. Generally the Jeeps aren't built as much, but without a doubt and without fail, every beginner's trip, I'm getting usually Facebook messages, calls, something like that a week to two weeks after the event. That, you know, generally starts with, oh, hey, I'm so-and-so. I wheeled with you out at, you know, one and whatever event. And we talked about blank. You know, we talked about lifts. We talked about this. We talked about that. And that's usually beginners who we talked about on the trail. So, um, but they don't, they don't know where to start, you know. So, uh, I kind of want to hit on that about kind of my opinion and your opinion. And, you know, maybe we differ on that a little bit. We'll see about kind of where to start and how to start uh, modifying an off-road mm-hmm. vehicle. And then kind of to build on that, you know, when you do that, do you, uh, do you do it all at once? Do you save up your money and try to do it all at once? Do you do it in stages? You know, what, what do you, uh, how do you do that? Um, and then we'll see where that leads. But those are the kind of the two biggest ones for me that I get a mm-hmm. ton of, um, you know, doing the beginner groups and stuff like that. So um, that's, that's the two things I'd like to hit on unless you've got, you got anything else? Um, no, I think we'll see where the conversation takes us. Um, there might be some things that pop up during the conversation. Sometimes that uh, 
that happens and we get going on a little tangent here and that's totally fine. Um, but yeah, I think those are two really, really, really great things to start with. Um, and I can kind of kick us off here. The, one of the big things that I, I tend to start with, and this is coming from my own, my own experience here, um, was to wheel more often. Um, understanding that I do have limitations. Maybe I'm not jumping on, you know, the hard trails in an event, um, or if I'm going to URI, my usually, uh, my recommendation for locals is, you know, stay away from the D trails at first until you're comfortable wheeling. Um, once you get a, a grasp on how to safely, comfortably wheel, you kind of get, you know, your style, if whether you like to go a little bit faster, if you're just, if you get so impatient, you're just waiting on the trail every day, you kind of want to go that you kind of have an idea of what to build for. Um, from there, uh, logically in, in budget being efficient with your budget, I would say skid plates and maybe some slightly bigger tires before you full fledged jump into a suspension kit, because I don't like recommending what, you know, just there's a, I, in my mind, there's a difference between a lift kit and a suspension. Um, I don't necessarily want a lift kit. I want something that's going to work with the suspension and, uh, understand geometry and stuff like that. So my, my beginner advice is to get out there, go wheel, uh, conquer the easy trails, the, the intermediate trails and figure out what you're comfortable with and see where the limits of your rig actually is. Uh, and that's going to vary between, you know, vehicle to vehicle. If you're in a older Jeep, you know, TJ, LJ, YJ, those limitations are going to come up very quickly. Um, you're going to need a lot, <laughs> just throwing it out there. You're going to need a lot. Uh, JK definitely improved on that, the, especially the four door. Uh, it does have its limitations, but they're very, they're in my mind, they're actually more capable than the TJ, more comfortable than TJ. Um, then you get into the JLJT, um, which are extremely capable out of the box, especially the Rubicon uh, platform. And you can do a lot um, on that. I mean, just out at your your trip to Moab, I think you told uh, you and, and Jeremy Purick told me that just uh, Brittany's Jeep on a leveling kit and 35s could handle 90% of what's out there at Moab, which is to me is, is pretty incredible. Um, so you really don't need to go full fledged into a hundred thousand dollar build, but you know, you do have to start somewhere. So my advice is just to kind of figure out what you're comfortable with and get an idea of exactly what you want to build so that you can do it right the first time. And we'll get that into that in a minute. I, um, I've heard that shift in recent years where people are talking about skid plates first. And I think that has to do with, I'm getting more of, uh, the longer wheelbase stuff that we've been seeing is being mm -hmm. more prevalent. Yeah. Um, for sure. you know, with the Bronco, uh, being, having the four door, uh, the gladiator with the bad, with the, you know, I'm not saying a bad breakover angle, but it's not ideal. Four door JK, four door JL, all that kind of stuff, and I think the fact that the way the Jeep marketed um, brought more people to the Jeep brand, and and by extension, Ford marketing the Bronco kind of the same way, it brought more people to Jeep and Bronco and those kind of off road that weren't necessarily there before, um, and they they're new to off roading, they're new to wheeling, they don't they've never done it before, and when you don't do that and you don't understand how to drive a vehicle, yeah, you're going to um, you're going to find a need for skid plates, especially the longer the wheelbase gets. So I definitely, I definitely get that. And, and I like that a lot. I think, um, uh, what I generally will tell beginners is to take a vehicle out stock and learn the vehicle. Uh, if you, if you haven't done it before and, and I would do that, I would do that when I get a new vehicle, you know, if I, if I was to go out tomorrow and get a vehicle that wasn't a four door JL, um, I would go drive it for a while and figure out, I kind of figure that vehicle out. Like I did kind of really a little bit with the four by not really how to wheel it, but how it responds. And I did a lot of stuff in Moab where it was like, well, let's okay. Let's see what this does. Let's see how this does that. So even though I've driven thousands of miles off road, I was still taking myself back and learning some things with the four by because I'd never wheeled a vehicle, a hybrid like that before. So I think my advice would be, before spending a dime, you know, these vehicles are pretty dang capable uh, out of the box, more so than I think at any point in vehicle history, for sure. Um, you know, and, and I hear people say, well, you know, these trails were run by, you know, stock TJs on 29. I, that's true. 
but that was before those trails had 40s on them and got them rutted out by side by sides and tra the trails a trail now that's been around for a while doesn't necessarily look the same as it did 25 30 35 40 years ago it's a totally different it's a totally different thing now that's not saying that a very skilled driver with a good with a well-built rig can't do it but we're talking about beginners here so um, I'm generally not going to put a beginner out on a TJ on 29s and say, go learn the vehicle. What I am going to do, again, because again, we just have to understand this is where the market is going. This is what we, you know, I got I got lit up by some guy on Facebook the other day. I, I guess he doesn't know me. I didn't know him. He lit me up, did not like me at all, called me a mask wearing blah, blah, blah. Like he was not happy with me. Because I said something like it was it was something about um, the V8 kind of going away and not seeing it. And I was like, look, you're just going to have to understand that with the way the world is going, the two liter, the hybrid, the four by E and by extension, what I think is going to come in the next generation, putting that inline six hurricane. I know we can't do it in the JL, the, the firewall and all. I get that. But you're you're an idiot yeah. if you think that ain't coming. Um, he was not happy mm -hmm. about that. He was, I mean, I'm a, I'm American flag waving Patriot myself, but I was not that bad. And he was <laughs> getting in my applesauce for even saying such a thing. And I'm like, is this a, uh, I put a small block Chevy 350 in my XJ and it runs fine carbureted and I don't ever want to change probably, anything he, type he of guy. Was. I, we probably need to do an episode <laughs> on it. I just need to call him out by name and just not, I don't know why people always squiggle through the idiots names on Facebook. I just need to call this guy out direct, but it was like, dude, spend 15 seconds. Like just click on my Facebook profile and you're going to yeah. see that everything you're right. saying, you're an idiot. And I trying to, I, I told him, I was like, dude, you have no idea how far off base you are. Like, I am red blooded. Give me a V8 and everything. Like the race car is on my Facebook profile, man. Like, come on. <laughs> like, I hate that it's going this way. I don't like it. I do not approve. Um, but that's where we're going. That's the way the market's going. Um, and if we don't understand that, we're going to lose. You know, we can't go out there and just do rooster tails and throw up 500, 600 horsepower everywhere because of the forces that we're going against. And, you know, there's people out there trying to shut down trails. There's people out there, you know, so. We have to be with beginners. We have to teach them to be responsible with the trails. We have to teach them to be responsible with the vehicles. But we also have to understand where the drivetrains are going, where the powertrains are going. So um, with that being where the where the market's going, where our illustrious elected officials are taking us, you know, we can hate it. We can fight it. We can go kicking and screaming. But the, at the end of the day, it's more than likely going to happen, right? Like that's just probably going to be what it is. So I think we, I think we adapt, we adjust, we overcome. And by – by extension, you understand that it's different now. You know, we're not just a bunch of crazy southern rednecks going out and yeehaw and throwing it in four low and rooster tails. And certainly there is some of that. And I know some places you can go and do that if you want to message me privately. But by and large, most of the time now, most of the trail systems are dominated by beginner to lower level intermediate. And you know, it, it's it's the market shifted, and that, it's fine. It is what it is, right? Um, but when we, you know, used to be in the old, you know, old days, like you said, you'd throw on, you'd just throw everything at it, and you just kind of cobbled it together, and you went out and hit the mud. Now most people, you know, they're not wanting mud. You see Instagram. How many times have you seen an Instagram post of somebody going, I went hardcore wheeling this weekend, and it's like a logging trail, right? <laughs> More, more times right. than I care but to admit. That's, it, to be that's what it you. is. Like, um, but that's just that's the way it's, the moving. Way it's yeah. moving. And and to some people who have never experienced trail riding or being off of a highway, that is hardcore off roading. Um, they're like they and and I don't want to discredit that start. at all because I was there at yeah. some point. When too. they start, that's it. Um, I remember getting my first jk back in 2014 uh this actually brought up some pretty cool memories jeremy purick uh or rock crawler rather posted some 4570 and they're like this you know from 2014 like what were you wheeling in 2014 i had just bought my first jk um now i had had some previous experience in yjs and tjs before that but like the jk was the first thing that i felt comfortable enough to like actually hit a real trail in and i remember hitting brown mountain and um back in the day it gets closed now uh richland road mm -hmm. i remember hitting that for the first time thinking like i was god status and i felt awesome because to me like that was the hardest thing i had ever done and 
I loved it. And that's what got me. That's full fledged what, what hit the addiction there. Uh, and I didn't stop since. And, um, but yeah, so for some people that logging trail is adrenaline filled because they've never experienced, I've never slipped a tire. They've never had to like guide themselves down a, a, a steep decline, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I a hundred percent agree with that. And that is just the way this is going. But again, we all have to start somewhere. So yeah, I a hundred percent agree with just using it. And, um, and like you said, skid plates are just becoming more prevalent just because of the wheelbase. So. Well, and I say all of that to say, if you're a beginner, do that stuff, go do the logging trip, mm-hmm. go do the stuff that you, that you want to do. If you want to go out and do that kind of stuff, you don't know what that's going to lead to. Maybe that is where you stop. Maybe you're like, okay, this is fun, but uh, you know, I'm making payments on this thing or it's a lease and I've got to be able to, you know, every situation is different, which is why I didn't just come out and say, well, first thing is a lift or well, first thing is skid plates or first thing is bead locks. I don't think that there's a one size fits all, although I really do like the idea of skid plates. Um, but I like the idea of as a beginner, go do the things that you're going to want to do fully understanding that you're going to go one of two ways. Well, one of three, you're either going to get out there and hate it. And there's no reason for you to do anything. <laughs> there's, there's just no reason for you to upgrade anything. Um, and that could be in the form of, Oh, I hate this wheeling. Oh, I hate the mud. I hate the rocks. I want to be an overlander, whatever your build goes a totally different way. It could be, Oh, this is a lot of fun. Um, I don't really want to do anything more than this, but this is a lot of fun. Um, you know, it's a logging mm-hmm. road. It's a, it's a mountain trail. It's a fire road. It's, you know, there's a ton of that stuff, uh, out there. And let's be honest, there's a ton more of that out there than there are off-road parks. You know, by and large, people don't live close to off-road parks. Those of you that do, uh, I hate you. I love you, but I hate, I hate you. And I, I, I hate that I hate you, but I do, I do hate, and I'm jealous of you. Um, but most of us are going to have to travel. You know, for me, it's an hour to Uari, maybe a little less. It's four and a half ish, maybe a little bit more, uh, depending on Knoxville traffic to Windrock. Uh, it's like six or five and a half, six to AOP. I'm six or so to Black Mountain. I'm seven, seven and a half to Roush. I mean, so I'm not close to really any great parks, but I am three hours from a, a little trail called Hurricane Creek which is like that logging road trail. It's super, super popular with beginner and, and beginner intermediate um, in North Carolina. It's a very popular trip where a lot of people will kind of convoy like Jeep clubs and stuff. And and I saw a Bronco group did it uh, last weekend. They'll convoy out, they'll go ride Hurricane Creek and then they'll come back. So it's super popular. It's right there in the mountains off of I-40, right on the border of North Carolina and Tennessee between kind of almost dead half between Asheville and Knoxville on, uh, on I-40. So, but, um, you know, Richland Road, you mentioned it, that used to be up in the mountains, you know, that Boone Blowing Rock area, and of course they closed that down. So um, I would say go out and ride because that's, you know, you're either going to go, this sucks. You're going to say, oh, this is fun. Or you're going to get the bug and you're going to want to do mm-hmm. way more. But we need to know that. Like, yeah for you to build your vehicle, we need, you know, you need to know which, which of those ways you're going to go, because it's going to tell me what, what you want to do. If you tell me that, you know, that fire road thing is going to be what you want to do and you want to do a, B and C, then I'm going to be like, okay, well, I'm probably, if you're not going to be rock crawling, I'm probably, I might not say skid plates first because skid plates can be expensive, right? Maybe I do say a small lift in 35s. Maybe I say a little bit bigger lift in 37s depending, you know, after a conversation. But if you come to me and go, man, dude, that was life-changing experience. I want to go. I'm now Moab's on my bucket list. We're going to have a different conversation. (laughs) You know, we're going to have a different conversation about which way you're going to go, which then leads us into the second thing that we were going to, that we wanted to talk about, which is, okay, now we know what you want to do. We know you're going to be an overlander. Okay. Well, that tells us how we're going to build it. Oh, okay. We know you're going to be just a weekend warrior fire road trail, not a rock crawler. Okay. That takes us in this direction. Or, you got full on bit. You're full committed. This is now your personality. This is your life. <laughs> like you're sending out emails for brand ambassadors, sponsorships. About, like you're that person now. <laughs> and um, I, I get sorry, yeah. brand ambassadors. But you've got that, and that's now your thing. Uh, we're gonna have a different conversation about how that's gonna build. And I'm not. I'm not saying there's only three. There's levels, right? But that's generally the three ways. You know, the three branches on the tree. You're you're gonna go. Um, so then, yeah, we, we enter into, um, and I'd like your opinion on this before I share mine. Once somebody figures out, once a beginner goes out, they've wheeled their vehicle a couple times and they go, okay, 
Um, I, I got my vehicle and I've gone out to you are, I've gone out to Hurricane Creek. I've gone out to the fire road in Northern California, wherever they live, whatever they've done. Um, and that's different places in the country, totally different. Um, now I figured out what I want to do and you know, you have that conversation like, okay, well, you're going to go this way. You're going to need blah, blah, blah. You know, then, then where do you go? Do you, do you, do you do it in stages? Do you just say, you know, leave it like it is, save up, do it all at once. What, what say you on, on that front? So I've got, I've got way too much experience with this. (laughs) Um, In the past, I was wholeheartedly one piece at a time, whatever I could afford to spend this time on Jeep parts is what I was going to spend. Um, I'm a little bit in a different boat now. Um, but I'm, I also have a very good understanding of that, that budget mentality. And I would 100% say, and this is just coming from me. Like I'm a very analytical person. I'm a very logical person. I try to take emotions out of purchasing decisions. I look up 14 million reviews and use case videos on YouTube before I do anything. Camera gear related, uh, tech, Jeep stuff, doesn't matter. Um, I will, I want to know the ins and outs of everything I'm looking at. So now my mentality has kind of shifted. And so maybe I don't have 10, 15, $20,000 to drop on a build, but I'm going to plan that out methodically and, and understand exactly what I want to do and how to get there. And so if my budget only allows, Hey, I've got, you know, for the next couple of months, I can spend X amount of money on suspension. Well, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, but knowing and understanding that that suspension is going to work with these shocks, or this is what I want to do in the future. Uh, so I definitely get that and understand that. Um, however, with the LJ build, um, and I think I've mentioned this on the podcast before that LJ, I bought it in 2021. 20, um, it had basically nothing done to it. I mean, it was a rough country spring lift 35s, um, some horrible tube bumpers. Like it was, it was bad. Now I'd argue I'll probably got the cheapest LJ ever. Um, but with that, I sat down and put a plan together that what I wanted to do and where my end goal was. And over time I, I had the opportunity to start buying parts and doing what I've done in the past of just parting and piecing together with a plan in mind. Um, but ultimately I was like, you know, I'm, I really, I'm, it's a good driver. I don't want to mess it up too much and I'm not really ready to full fledged commit to this, but I know where I want to go. Um, so I just started stockpiling parts and then lo and behold, the plan changed. Um, it went from, this has to be a daily driver. I'm going to drive the LJ to and from work every day. I'm going to do this to the opportunity where financially I was like, Hey, I can afford an actual daily driver vehicle. I can afford something that is, is a highway queen. Don't have to touch it. Don't have to modify anything on it. The grand chair can't yeah, Your is pretty it's sweet. Comfortable. I know mountain bike people know you have a Miata, yeah. but that thing's pretty sweet. <laughs> uh, I would drive a Miata shit. Um, but now that I have that, the LJ was like, okay, I, this does not have to be a daily driver anymore. This is what I can truly want to make it. This is, we're going full in game here. Um, so from that perspective, I said, I'm putting all my eggs in the basket. I'm saving my money. I don't care how long it takes. It's going to, I'm going to have this exactly the way I want to have it because I know what I want to do with it now. And that's where the tons came in. That's where uh, rock crawlers, new suspension came in. That's where big shocks and coilovers and armor, everything that I wanted to do came in. And I just held on to those. And here we are a year and a half into the build and we're still getting it done. But when this thing is finished, like it's going to be my dream Jeep and it's going to be the Jeep that I have dreamed about for probably 10 years now. And, uh, and I'm super excited for that. So now my opinion is if you can save up and have some patience, do it all at once, have fun with it. Like you said, this ties into the first point, go wheel it and have fun and do whatever, drive it and get, get a feel for it while you're doing these things. But if you can have some patience, save up, put a really good detailed plan together and then execute it and then enjoy the living shit out of that thing when it's done. And then knowing that you don't have to continuously dump more and more money into it or take off parts or rebuy stuff or 
realize things aren't compatible with other things and just completely change the build four or five times. Cause ultimately that's going to cost you a lot more money in the end. So you hit on two big things. And I think the most important thing here, again, we're talking to beginners here, right? I'm not talking to the seasoned professional. I think making a plan is huge. Um, I would, I would encourage generalizations in that plan. I would not for a beginner, I would not say get down into the weeds and know, the, the specific part number of every component, I, I would say, I think that that's a fault of a lot of people. They call us up, they, they put in a quote request. They go, I want this, 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 and this, and they know part numbers. And when you start talking to them, you're like, that's not a really great plan. Like the overall plan of, I want to lift wheels and tires for this. Okay. That makes sense, but I'm not seeing the flow and why you pick this. And then they don't really know why other than they, you know, they saw it on Facebook or whatever. So I think number one is make a general plan of what you want. I want to lift wheels, tires. I want bumpers. I want a winch. I want skid plates. Okay. If that's your plan, that's your plan. And, and start looking for stuff that, you know, kind of works for you. Cause it does. I understand that it has to be form and function nowadays. It has to, people aren't going to buy stuff they don't like, right? They're not in general, they're not going to buy uh, a bumper that they think is ugly because they know it's going to work because we have so many options of stuff that look so different. The odds are you're going to find something that matches your aesthetic choice with something that also also works. So I would I would I would say make a general plan. But then as a beginner, understand that you're a beginner. You don't have three, five, 10, 15 years of experience and knowing exactly how this is going to turn out, what this is going to do, how it's going to perform. You don't know that because you don't even know what you don't know. So while making a general plan is good, also understand that the plan is going to change and you you outfitted that. You, you said you said that perfectly because even with your experience, you got to know that the plan's going to change, and then you got to be okay with that. You know, be okay with the plan changing. When when I bought Reaper, that was one of the first JL sold in North Carolina. We didn't know crap about the JL, so I went through. You know, it got so it got. You know, a lot of people think that I was just this this savior of JL, and I just decided day one I was going to do all this testing. No, I did not start out on the JL that way. Um, there just was not a lot of parts. So as stuff came out, I would upgrade stuff. And that is not a smart financial move. People don't do that. Um, but owning a shop, we kind of twisted that. We said, you know, if we're going to do this, this is how we're going to do it. That, that's the plan changing. That was the plan going to, okay, we're going to do this as a marketing thing. Well, once we were probably three years into it and we knew, we knew everything on the market, how everything was going to work, we kind of understood the JL and it was time to move on to the JT, then I was able to make the plan and go, okay, well, this is Reaper's final state. This is where, you know, she's going to end up and the axles happened and the coilovers happened and all that. And that is where she sits to this day. You know, the, the bumpers aren't getting changed. Axles aren't getting changed. You know, that stuff's not getting changed. It's there. That was part of the build plan. When I bought the Gladiator, I had it for probably 30 days while we formulated what we were going to do. What bumpers, what tires, what wheels. And once we did it, we did it. And we we had it in the shop for, I don't know, probably six to eight weeks. Uh, because, you know, it wasn't that we couldn't have done it quicker. We had the V8 swap. We had all that. But we had other customer vehicles, right? So there was a lot of, it was a lot of work on this when we can. But we knew what it was going to do. And aside from some idiot hitting the front bumper in a, uh, uh, like a show and shine, a Cars and Coffee parking lot, we had to change bumpers out really fast. Um, you know, had our tech on it, um, which was, that was the build plan, but then it ended up getting a crawl tech revolution on it because it was, it got hit in the cars and coffee and we needed a bumper like pronto and it needed to be done ready. I needed to like it and it had to go. I think it was going to Jeep invasion and crawl tech pushed one through and got it for me. But other than that, the gladiator didn't really change. You know, what's what, what rock sliders went on there is what went on there. What wheels went on there. I think we changed it once when we went to, we, I had bead locks on there that a company had sent me, but the, our rep left that company. I was like, well, we're not really going to rep that company anymore. And I changed it up. So other than that, it didn't change because of needs. Um, you know, the Hemi was the plan. The lift went on there. That didn't change. The shocks went on there. That didn't change. Very, very few things changed after that first eight to 10 weeks because that was the plan. Um, a few things changed because again, it was a JT. Um, but again, it was probably three months in and that was pretty much it other than that accident with the bumper. And then we, I think we changed graphics one time. That was it. Now on the four by E we've gone even one more level because now I know the JL. Um, 
I know it, I know it inside out. I know it left. I know it right. I know it up. I know it down. So when I bought the four by E, I knew immediately, okay, this is what I'm going to do. So I took out a spreadsheet and I go, boop, 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 boop. And I said, okay, this is the lift. This is the shocks. This is, it was very, it was a quick, it was one afternoon and the plan was done. And aside from the stuff, the three or four things I couldn't get on before Moab, um, that plan really hasn't changed. You know, we knew pretty quick what armor was going to go on there. Um, we didn't have a lot of time to do that. So I threw some generic hold together stuff on there. That's why the four by you still in Colorado getting some next venture motorsports love. Can't wait to show that to everybody. We added something to that. A little, a little aesthetic thing last night. That's going to be super sweet. Going to talk to Dan about that later today. Um, but we've known that plan. You know, we knew before it left for Moab that it was staying in Colorado. You know, you know, what it's done has not really changed. Um, you know, except for that it probably will, <laughs> You know, even in all of that, I know what I want. Yeah, the plan, I'm probably going to change. You know, there's already been talk about, well, maybe I don't want shocks. Maybe I want coilovers. Maybe, you know, and that that was born from taking it out, seeing what it did, seeing how it performed, and molding that to how I want to drive it. If if I was going to make it a daily driver, I'm not going to have the conversation about coilovers. I'm not going to have a conversation about probably, you know, going full armor light or PSC or all that. But after I went to Moab and I'm like, eh, I really could tweak here, I could tweak here, I could tweak there. I made a list. It's not a long list, but we're going to change a few things because of that. So you can make all the plans in the world and you can th say you're going to stick to them. But I think the more general you can make your plan, um, the better and be comfortable with switching it up a little bit, especially as a beginner. And I think I would also recommend instead of researching parts, recommend research shops and people um research yes. find yeah. somebody near you or that you trust that that already knows this stuff that can guide you the right way because the problem is if you're a beginner doing research you're a beginner doing research it's always 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 you're not educated enough yet you're not you don't know what you don't know and you're probably going to miss something and the problem there is that's fine if you miss something i'm not going to make you feel bad for that but it's going to cost you money if you mess up you're gonna, it's going to cost you money, and I'm, I'm not I'm not down for costing people unnecessary money. Um, I like making money. Everybody does. Um, but I'd, I'd, I'd feel bad about having you in the shop five times because I didn't tell you the right thing or you kept changing your mind or whatever. So make a general plan and then discuss that plan to get it narrowed down to actual parts. Discuss it with, you know, research people that you can talk to, research shops. Um, you know, stay away from shops that only sell one brand. If you go to their their Facebook page and it's only ever one brand on one type of vehicle, if it's only ever, you know, uh, metal cloak on Jeep, but you have a Bronco, eh, probably not the best place for you. Um, on the flip side, if it's all trucks, you know, if, they're all there, if all they're doing is 18 inch lifts on Chevy Silverados and you got a Jeep Wrangler, probably not the right place for you. Um, I would try to find somebody that knows the deal and use that experience because the people that you should listen to are the people that want to educate you. If they act like it's a, a burden, stop talking to them. That's not the people you want to work with. So make your general plan and then research people in shops, find the right people in shops for you and your vehicle, for your specific vehicle, because different shops, different people know about different things. Um, don't come to me. I mean, I could, I could, I got passable knowledge in big truck stuff, but I'm not that guy. I'm not, I'm not going to be your in-depth expert on all things Carly suspension. I know enough to be dangerous, but it's not my forte. Um, by And by extension, I don't know where all the companies are that do crazy accessories for Jeeps even. You want to build a Jeep that's going to be a weekend warrior or a wheeling vehicle? I got you. Bronco the same way. You want to build an overland? I've got you. I've done that. I've been there. I've lived that life. I still do. I got you. Not a problem. But I understand that. So I would research the people, research the shops, and then and then follow um, follow that because every situation is different. You may be in the situation where the way you're building it, we can get away with doing it in stages. Or it may be the deal where I say, mm, here's the problem. If you don't build it all at once and you go try to do Pritchett Canyon, you're going to break and you're going to hey, everybody's going to hate you. Maybe we build this in, in right. sections and you understand that as we do chapters of your book, of your build, that you're going to be able to take on more and more stuff, knowing that eventually you're going to be able to get to, you know, point F, but we got to get through B, C, D and E first. And that's going to change 
that's going to change based on people. So I'm not really trying to equivocate, but I do think that every, I just, I think everybody is so different. Every situation is different, but I think the things that are universal are generalized plan, find somebody that knows how, that knows how to build a vehicle the way you want to build it, and then just trust them and listen to them. If you can hit that trifecta, you're going to be happy. And then just be comfortable with planes changing because you're going to change. Your wants, needs, and desires as you get out there may change. You may get on, you may think you want to go do all the hard stuff, and then I take you on one black diamond at Windrock, and you're like, F this. <laughs> it's, it's, this is super, I am not doing this. I'm stopping right here. Okay, that's cool. That's totally yeah. fine because I'm going to tell you, every off-road park in this world has multiple degrees of difficulty, and that's for a reason. Mm -hmm. It is made for multiple yep. levels of driver and multiple levels of vehicle, and that is fine. Um, I've been yep. the idiot that was on Double Black's body damage. I've been there. I'm not that guy anymore. I'm just not. I, it doesn't, you know, I don't, ugh, I, I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> like, I just don't want to. Yeah. And I don't no, want to hit wet trails. I don't want to hit it makes, either. So, right. you know, yeah, I'm going to hit I'm the trails you. that match up with what I want to do. Can I do that other stuff? Mm -hmm. Sure, I could. I don't want to. I don't want to do the stuff that you're yeah. probably going to do on your LJ. I'm going to be like, he's an idiot. <laughs> I don't want to do that. But you're going to go out there and have a great I, time. I think you would be, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. I hate wheeling in the wet too. And I do have my limit of what I want to do because at the end of the day, like, I gain nothing out of doing double black trails or buggy trails. And Content. at the end of the day, like would I, I would rather spend my time on, on a, on a trail day wheeling and having fun with my friends and doing things that I'm comfortable with pushing myself a little bit. But what's not fun is sitting broken down sideways, broken axle, waiting for someone to come rescue you all day. Um, especially in the Southern heat mm -hmm. and humidity during wheeling season. Um, yeah, that does not sound fun. Um, being on my lid for 30 minutes while I'm waiting for someone to figure out how to tip me back over. Fire. And now I've got to replace a windshield and, and everything else. Or, you know, now I've got oil all in the intake. Like, that doesn't sound fun at all. Um, I have <laughs> I have no proclivity to do understand. that. I mean, I get people uh, will I challenge to do that. It's like yeah. that whole people, yeah. you know, where people get, what is it? They say people get married, like, really, really young, and then they get divorced because they're like, well, I never experienced life. Like, I get you think mm -hmm. you want that. <laughs> like, you think you want little school bus at Windrock, or you think you want, you know, uh, what's that, Devil's Elbow, and you think you want all the rat's nest and all this. You think you want that, and yeah. then you do it, and then crap breaks, and you're like, you do that enough, and you're like, okay, I've been there, done that. And But I do understand, yep. I do understand that proclivity to want to do that, and then once you've hit that, you've hit oh, that yeah, pinnacle, you're like, sure. yeah, I'm done. I'm good. <laughs> I'm totally good. Yeah. Well, and what I was going to lean into a little bit of what you said is research people. Um, I want to kind of expand on that a little bit and like absolutely surround yourself with people who have more knowledge than you. Cause I've always been told if you're the smartest person in the room, go find another room. Um, and so being around you, being around Jeremy Purick, being around the race team and, and having the opportunity. And I know this isn't everyone's experience, but having the opportunity to go in multiple places and ride in a passenger seat, uh, has allowed me to say, okay, maybe I don't really care about doing a double black in rock up a muddy hill on a buggy line, but what I do care about and what I would love to do is to be able to to knock out one or two hammers trails um, or run pit Pritchett with zero issues and zero breakages, um, have a comfortable week in in Moab without breaking anything. Um, those are my goals. And, and that's something that I would not have understood or been able to get to without researching people without getting some time. And let's be honest, humbling myself to say, yeah, I'll sit in your passenger seat. I'll sit in the back seat. I'll film. I'll, I'll hang out and ride along to see what I like or didn't like while I wasn't wheeling my own vehicle. So I a hundred percent get that. And I've had people do that in my vehicle. Um, mm -hmm. you know, hell, even Jeremy Pierre ride my back seat, not because he was researching. That was because Gerald Lee left him high and dry. <laughs> and Gerald took off on him. Right. Bridget. Uh, sorry, G. Um, but yeah, I think that's I think that's those are those are some wise words. And I've taken people riding with me before that have just asked, like, hey, can I wheel this trail with you? And if I got an open seat, I'm like, yeah, sure, I don't care. I mean, it doesn't bother me. And you know, yeah. they understand. Then that then they see they see a couple of things, like you just said. Do I like this or do I hate this? Does it scare the living crap out of me, or does it scare me enough to where I want to do it? And then they understand mm -hmm. how a Jeep 
built for doing that performs so much differently than a Jeep that was not built to perform yeah. on that kind of trail or that type of terrain or whatever. So I think that can be, um, right. that can be super helpful. But again, that goes back to researching people and places beforehand and not mm -hmm. trying to do every little bit. I get people are some people are like that. They're planners. They're detail oriented people. Mm -hmm. You just kind of got to put that OCD part of you aside a little bit and understand that that might be more of a detriment to you when building an off-road vehicle or even just a vehicle for playing mm -hmm. around on the weekends, whatever your, whatever your plane is, um, that generalize the plan of, Hey, I'd like to end up here and here's how I think I need to be there. But understand that a, that plan's going to change and B, um, leave the details to the professionals or the experienced yeah. people, even the ones that, even if that somebody is just some, you know, local trail guide or whatever, that's not trying to sell you parts or it's not a shop or whatever. I don't, it doesn't matter who it is as long as it's the right people. Mm -hmm. That's where you need to focus, focus right. your research on. So, um, I know that doesn't, it doesn't really answer that question, I guess, of do you build in stages or do you build all the way? But I think if you do it that way, whatever happens is going to be the right way. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I, I do like how you pointed out that to be flexible. Um, real quickly, this Got reminded it. me of, uh, so when I lived in um, Hilton Head, I worked as a, uh, as a uh, zip line guide. Uh, I don't know if you knew that about me or not. Um, That's pretty freaking awesome. During I did my not know tenure that. for for RevKit, uh, I lived in, in Savannah. I uh, worked in Hilton Head. Uh, loved it, um, but I wanted to pick up another job and grab some extra side money. So uh, for afternoons and weekends, I was a zipline guide, and um, we were doing maintenance on a uh, on a tree platform. And I know this doesn't sound like it's going to make sense, but it will. Uh, and one of my questions when we got to the top, I was like, dude, how do these things like stay stable in high winds and tropical storms, or whatever? Cause obviously you're not replacing these platforms 80 feet up in the air every single year. He's like, no, nah, dude. He said, uh, if it sways, it stays. He said, if it's flexible, it'll move and it'll last several seasons and we'll be all right. But, and I know he didn't mean this in any kind of like dig deep into your self mentality, but in my head, it's something just clicked. And I was like, Oh shoot if I'm not such a rigid person, if I'm flexible, my goals are met. And I know it's just a weird comparison, but that's kind of something that I like to, to say now is if it sways, it stays. So be flexible in your plan. And don't be so analytical that you have to have every single part and uh, part number outline, like Doug said. Um, but understand the goal will change your, your thoughts and feelings of, of, how you wheel, what you want to do and where you want to go may change and be flexible with that. And that'll absolutely work. The last thing I kind of want to say and touch on, um, is don't compare your build with other people's builds as far as like you're trying to match and, and just out, outdo. That's everybody. a tough one. <laughs> it is a tough one. Yep. It's a very tough one. Um, and I know I'm, I'm throwing a lot of freaking self-help quotes here, but comparison is the thief of joy. Like if you constantly compare your rig to someone else's rig or your budget to someone else's budget, you're never going to have fun with what you do and you're never going to enjoy what you want to because you're always seeking out the very next thing that you want to do. Um, so this ties back into the very beginning of this of, of just enjoy what you have and figure out what that is. Build for you. Don't build for your neighbor. Don't build for the guy on Instagram. Don't build for social media. Don't build for clout. Build for what you want to do and move from and on there. the next episode of trail therapy with dr <laughs> caleb <laughs> we'll discuss the inner workings of the brain as it relates to four-wheel drive low <laughs> oh can we Whew, that'd be fun oh getting deep four-wheel drive psychology deep coming week. at you <laughs> man well um yeah i think that's I mean, that's where i'm at i think that's i think that's about the best thing i could possibly do for a beginner because you're covering all the bases get mm -hmm. out there experience it Learn what you're going to want to do um, because what you think you want driving that thing off the parking lot on the first day is probably not going to be very accurate. So learn what you mm -hmm. want, make a general plan, understanding that plan is probably going to change and build in flexibility for changing that plan. And then find somebody that knows their stuff that can guide you along, getting you the right stuff and doing it the right way so that, you know, mm -hmm. first off, you're not wasting time. And then more importantly, you're not wasting money. Um, and for some that's, you know, time and money are equal. Sometimes time is more valuable than money. So, um, you know, just be smart about the plan. Like you said, you know, I understand that some people's plan may be to build for clout. Yep. May be somebody's plan. Your plan may be to build for Instagram and to get free parts and to put pictures on Instagram. 
that's going to be, you're going to build that way. Um, okay. So find somebody who's done that and ask them. I, it's not the way I'm going to build one, but I understand that that's kind of the world that we live in, right? Like I'm not a huge fan of the eights are probably going to be gone in 10 years in Jeeps I, in all, in all the, and maybe in all vehicles, I don't like it, but I understand that's probably the way right. that the world's going to go. People that were alive in the fifties mm-hmm. and sixties never would have thought that certain things would have gone away, but they did. And, you know, some would say the world's better for it. Some would say the world's better, you know, worse. I think overall technology has made lot people's lives easier. So, I mean, it just stands to reason that that's going to happen. So just understand it, know it, love it. And, you know, kind of maybe not love it, but at least embrace it and, and figure out how to <laughs> yeah. just figure out how to make it work for you. Cause if you can do that, you're going to be way happier. So I think if you can do those things as a beginner, um, you're going to save a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of stress, and you know you're gonna you're gonna not get into a lot of the pitfalls that so many people have fallen into because the vast majority of people I think don't do the things that we're talking about here, uh, even if they've been told to for whatever reason they just don't, and you know it ends up costing them it ends up costing them time it ends up costing them money you know the stress and all that stuff we just talked mm-hmm. about, um, and then you know eventually maybe they figure it out and they get happy but. It's a long and it's a long and winding road to get there rather than, you know, the shortest point, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, people. <laughs> and, and it's yeah. not, you know, while the back yeah. roads may be fun, uh, they are not the quickest way to get there. And while they may be fun to drive on a motorcycle or a Jeep or a sports car, um, they're not that fun when it comes to wasting time and money. So understand that those right. two things um, are separate. So um, with that, that, unless you've got anything else, that's kind of where I think I'm good with leaving it there. I think we've said what needs to be said. I'm, I'm yeah. good. We'll leave it yeah, there. We'll yeah, absolutely. Um, so we did, yeah. I, I want to end it with this. We did release last week, the, uh, some of the details for outlaw off-road trail days. Um, we have much, uh, much has happened over the weekend. Uh, as this today, I think the link is going live. We're releasing this on Wednesday. So tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah. So this link will be live for everybody on Thursday on the main outlaw off-road website. We'll put it up on social media. We'll push it around. Um, we are going to be releasing a video on the outlaw off-road YouTube page, not from dirt to dust outlaw mm-hmm. off-road. We'll be releasing a video with the actual details where the link is, when this is going to be the, all that, all that kind of stuff you know, dollar amounts, all that kind of stuff that is going up, um, on today that is going up today. Um, and then tomorrow, Thursday, um, the link will go live for the general public. I will say this, we are limiting spots because it is East coast wheeling. We cannot be taking 20 and 25 rigs on a trail. We're not going to do it. Get in early. Um, I have talked Mm -hmm. with hero off road. They are making a custom link just for this event to be able to donate. And they are limiting it to the spots that Armando and I've talked about. And I think it's 64, which is eight groups of eight. Um, maybe we expand that a tiny, but we are not, this is not going to be 150, 200 vehicles, people. It, we just can't do it. We don't have the staff for that. This is a volunteer thing. We are not charging money. We are not bringing in any revenue for this. So we are doing this with an all volunteer staff with a little bit of help from Windrock. So we are limited on what we can do. So, um, to, to avoid people getting upset, I think it's probably going to happen. Um, I'll, I'll tell you two things. Get in early. Get signed up early. Make your donation early uh, because there is a time limit on the donation. It doesn't have to be day one, although I'm sure Hero Offroad would appreciate that. But we are going to be putting a time limit on that that will be discussed in that video and will be on the web page. Um, so get in early. And the second thing is, no worries, we are already discussing two more events for next year a an off-road trail event at a different location possibly another off-road event still going back to windrock and then a overlanding specific event so um we know that there is a lack of this in the industry especially where all levels are welcome but more you know we're going to have stuff out there for advanced but i'm not catering this to advanced people advanced people don't need me telling them what to do they just need a time and a direction and go do those trips that's all they need so that's all they're going to get yeah uh, but the beginners need the time, the effort, and the energy put in, even to the intermediate level, to be able to be, you know, led and guided and and kind of taught even uh, along the way, which is what we like doing. And I know who all the trail leaders are, and those are the they share the same philosophy that I do. So, 
get in early, get in fast um, as soon as you can. Let me put that link up on Thursday on the Outlaw Offroad website. Um, check out that video today. Go over to the Outlaw Offroad YouTube page. Check out that video for the details, way more details, all the details. Um, and then get signed up on Thursday. Get signed up tomorrow um, to be able to get into that event. And then if you don't get in, you know, I understand that 64 spots or maybe possibly a few more is not a lot. Um, but, you know, we are one company, so uh, there will be more. There will be others. Um, you know, we're doing another event with Rock Crawler already next year. I was talking to Jeremy last night. He says he's already got the next kind of two or three years planned out. He knows where he's going, knows what he wants to do. And, of course, we'll be along for that as well, uh, as well as doing our own mm -hmm. um, Outlaw Off-Road Trail Days events and our new Series 03 Adventures, which is Outlaw Off-Road Overland Adventures. Um, so 03 will be a thing probably starting next year as well as we finalize route. So basic gist of it is stay tuned, keep listening, keep watching, because you never know when we're going to announce another event. You just you just never know. You just never know. So, <laughs> yeah, that's where we right. will. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. That's where I'm going to leave it. Um, as always, we thank everybody for listening. Uh, it's because of people listening and watching and 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 patronizing the Outlaw Offroad shops because of that that we're able to do events like that, that we're able to continue doing the podcast and all this kind of stuff mm -hmm. and bringing you guys the information and the interviews and the tech stuff and all that kind of stuff um, that we're able to do. So we do appreciate all of you for that. Please make sure to like, review, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you're catching us on YouTube. Uh, leave those five-star reviews on Apple, on Spotify, on YouTube Play, uh, YouTube Podcast now. Oh, there's no more Google Play. So make sure to be doing all of that. Please do that. We thank you for doing that. Um, and that is all I've got. So without uh, without taking up anybody's time the rest of the day, thank you guys again. Uh, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, however you're finding us, thank you, thank you. And we will catch you on the next episode. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Dirt to Dust. Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time don't follow us you're not gonna make it